Hello again. Today we're going to learn about pragmatics. What is meant by pragmatics? As you can see here, pragmatics is the study of meaning in context. So it's quite different from semantics. In pragmatics, we study context and how it contributes to meaning. Therefore, the word context here is very crucial in pragmatics. Well, from the definitions, we can understand that semantics is the study of meaning in language. It is the study of meaning without context, or uh, it's the study of meaning in isolation. On the other hand, pragmatics is the study of meaning with context. So it tries to incorporate context into play. And uh, pragmatics has been around since about 1970s in response to semantics and uh, it tries to go beyond literal meaning as we can see here and uh, it also focuses on implied meanings so that is pragmatics semantic meaning is the foundation of pragmatic meaning and that's why it makes sense that when learners try to acquire vocabulary of the target language they will tend to learn the semantic meaning of the words first and then at the later stage as their proficiency of the semantic meaning develops they might start to integrate context into their interpretation of meaning and therefore uh, it is when pragmatics uh, becomes relevant it is when pragmatics is used There are several aspects that we need to consider when studying pragmatics. The first one is contextual meaning. Contextual meaning refers to the type of meaning that can only be understood through context. That is context-dependent meaning yeah, or contextual meaning. So for example, if we have, what is this? Uh, you can only understand my utterance when you know what the object is. And when I say, what is this? I'm showing this thing, right? This is the object that is referred to by the word this. So you can understand my question, what is this? Uh, by knowing the context, right? And the context is me as the speaker and this marker as the object or the referent of the word this, of the pronoun this that I use in my question. That is contextual information. Now, the second thing that you need to understand is the speaker's intention because we also need to interpret the speaker's intention when having a conversation with somebody. So for example, when uh, somebody says, I'm out of gas to you uh, during a journey, for example, uh, it means that that person is not only informing that he's out of gas, uh, he might communicate something else. For example, he might be asking for help from us to show the direction to the nearest gas station, for example. So that is the speaker's intention. There's always an intention be behind every utterance being said by somebody. So we need to find out what the intention is during every conversation and that is the speaker's intention and then thirdly we have social closeness it also contributes to the interpretation of meaning in pragmatics because our social closeness or our social relationship would also affect the way we communicate so our relationship with somebody will affect the way we communicate. For example, when we are communicating with our teacher, it would be different from the way we are communicating with our uh, friends, for example. So, uh, for example, if we have three utterances like, open the door, and then, could you please open the door? They both uh, are the same, right? They both have the same meaning, but they are used to different persons, right? 
We cannot say open the door to somebody that we really respect, for example, our teacher. We cannot say open the door to our teacher because that's going to be quite irritating to hear, right? But uh, to communicate with our teacher, we might say other thing like, uh, could you please open the door, sir? Or perhaps we might use something that is more indirect, like for example, sir, it's very hot in this room. So instead of, you know, asking a question, we might just uh, using declarative statement to indirectly indicate that we want somebody or we ask for help from somebody to open the door yeah and that is another way social relationship how close you are to your uh, interlocutor to your listener will influence the way you speak the way you utter uh, your sentences the way you communicate your ideas There are actually various topics in pragmatics, but I'd like to mention three most popular ones. And they are speech act, and then implicature, and the last one, the cooperative principle. Now let's get to the speech act. What is meant by speech act? Speech act is the action that we perform when uttering sentences. So it's the action performed by utterances or sentences during a conversation. For example, when I say, would you like to come to my party tonight? When I say that, uh, it means that I'm inviting you, right? I'm doing an action of inviting. And that action of inviting is the speech act of my utterance. I'm saying, would you like to come to my party tonight? That is the utterance, and then the speech act or uh, the action that I do with that utterance is inviting. I'm inviting you to come to my party, right? So even though it's a question, but my action is more like an inviting one. And that's speech act. Now, the second one, the implicature. Implicature is like uh, when we're trying to imply something by saying something else so it's uh, it's like uh, to mean something by saying something else that is implicature it's like another word for indirect speech act because uh, we tend to be indirect or we tend to be implicit when we are using implicature so for example when somebody says would you like to come to my party tonight and then we say respond to that invitation by saying uh, well tonight is actually my brother's birthday for example so when we say that uh, it seems that we do not say something that is related to the topic being asked right because the question was would you like to come to my party tonight and then we respond to that by saying it's actually my brother's birthday tonight is my brother's birthday so instead of saying yes or no to the invitation to the to the speech act of uh, inviting we respond to that by informing that tonight is my brother's birthday and that is what we call as implicature because when we say that tonight is my brother's birthday we are actually intending to decline the invitation right so we are declining the invitation but we do not say it explicitly we do not say it by uh, you know by uttering yes or no yes yes i can come to the party or no i cannot come to the party we do not we do not express it explicitly but it's but instead we say it implicitly we we respond to the invitation by saying tonight is my brother's birthday so it means that I cannot come to your party, right? And that is implicature. And then the next one or the last one, we have the cooperative principle. What is meant by the cooperative principle? It's actually a principle that is believed by uh, pragmatists that uh, the principle needs to be followed by uh, persons who are having conversation in order to 
have an effective conversation. So for example, um, in the cooperative principle, we have four maxims. The first one is the maxim of quantity. It means that we need to uh, respond to an utterance uh, by saying something that is not uh, too much or not uh, less than what is needed. So our uh, our way of conversing, our utterances, shouldn't be too informative or less informative than what is needed. That is the maximum quantity. We need to have the right quantity when it, uh, contributing to a conversation. That is the maximum of quantity. And then the second one, we have the maximum of quality. The maximum of quality refers to uh, the truthfulness of the ideas that we are trying to communicate. So it is believed that when we are having a conversation, uh, the participants should be truthful to uh, the person they are having a conversation with. They need to be honest. That is the, the maximum of quality. And then the third one, we have the maximum of relevance. It is about how relevant our utterances are to the topic being discussed. And finally, the fourth one, we have the maximum of manner. So it is believed that when two people are having a conversation, both people need to uh, contribute to the conversation in a manner that is not too uh, ambiguous or not too difficult to understand by the other interlocutor. That is the maxim of manner. And those are the four maxims that people need to follow when having a conversation. That's the cooperative principle. That's what I need to cover in this video. I hope you have a better understanding of pragmatics. Feel free to write your question in the comment section. Bye. We can still have fun for now.